globalization, any rethinking of Christianity has to be done within the context of the world's religions. And one of the first things that del delighted me about uh, Don Cubitt's work is his attention to Buddhism, to a Buddhist Christianity or maybe a Christian Buddhism, who knows, but that's the kind of interaction with the world's religions that I really uh, appreciate. Let me define globalization. The already profound and ever-increasing interconnectedness and interdependency of the world's peoples, nations, cultures, politics, and economies. Uh, that's a long-winded way of saying the world is shrinking, and it's shrinking faster and faster and faster. A couple of uh, quick examples of that. My wife, Randy, who has worked in the telecommunications industry most of her life, uh, had friends in the workplace who were Hindu, Jain, Sikh, Buddhist, and Muslim. My mother, uh, who uh, passed away 12 years ago, was a school teacher and never met a person of, from any of those religions. And I think that 40 years made all the difference. The world is shrinking and the internet is speeding it up faster and faster. I tend to use IBM ThinkPads and every once in a while I need technical help. And the last time I called IBM, I thought I detected an Indian accent on the phone. And uh, it turned out to be a man named Raj in the state of Rajasthan, in the city of Jaipur. And boy, he was helpful. And at that moment, I didn't care about out outsourcing. You know, at that moment, I have other concerns, but that, um, it, it worked. Uh, about that globalization, uh, I'm seeing globalization more and more discussed in terms of economics. There's a saying that if the Nikkei market sneezes, in Tokyo, Wall Street catches a cold. I think that same interconnectedness, that same intimate interconnectedness, uh, is obvious to me at least in religion as well. Uh, pluralism is an aspect, I think, of globalism or, or, or globalization, or maybe a consequence of it. Uh, it's the peaceful coexistence of ethnic, cultural, and or religious groups and their competing beliefs and practices within a society. Um, and again, my wife is kind of a poster child for that. She, uh, uh, and I think another difference I, between my wife and, and my, uh, my mother, uh, my mother was quite willing to consign to hell Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Sikhs, that, because she never met one. It's easy to do as long as these people are abstract. It's harder to do that when you've met these folks and find out that they're, uh, they're actually people with good hearts, good intentions, and have the same struggles and maybe some of the same answers uh, we do. There's also a religious attitude uh, called pluralism. Uh, John Hick was mentioned yesterday as a uh, pluralist. The, the attitude of pluralism, and I suspect some of you share that, is a, uh, well, Low-grade pluralism would be a mere acceptance of the fact of the wild diversity, it's beyond wide, it's wild, of religious belief and practice resulting from globalization. This is the attitude that says, I'm surrounded by people with different beliefs and practices, and that's okay. That's, that's a kind of a weak pluralism. A stronger pluralism as a religious attitude would be the attitude the affirmation that many or all of the coexisting faiths are valuable, and uh, contains spiritual truth. I developed a kind of spectrum of religious attitudes, uh, ranging from exclusivism on this side, which says we have the one true religion, or we have the one truth about religion, and uh, you don't, and you're in trouble. Um, the other end of the spectrum is relativism, it says there is no truth, it's all opinion. Between those, and I think most people, and some of the statistics that Nigel uh, was uh, citing yesterday suggested to me that most are somewhere in the middle between inclusivism, which is the attitude that uh, there is religious truth, it can be found in all the world's religions, but mine, only mine, has the sufficient amount of it. Or to put it in very crass evangelical terms, 
The Hindus may have some knowledge of God in their religion, but only mine will save you. That's inclusivism. It's, it's a little louder than absolutism or exclusivism, but uh, it's, uh, it's still centered on my faith as the one sufficient faith. Pluralism falls somewhere between inclusivism and relativism. It says, truth is grasped partially by many or all of the world's religions. And one of the poster child children for uh, pluralism would be Mahatma Gandhi, who said, all religions are true, but each is truest in its own time and place. What does that do to Christian missions? That suggests that Hinduism may just be the right religion for the majority of people in India, and Islam may just be the majority of people in the Arab world, and so on. Well, if you're a dyed in the world pluralist, the only reason to present your religion to somebody else as an option is if they're dissatisfied with theirs. As long as somebody is satisfied with being a Hindu, a pluralist would say, leave them alone. They're, they may be on the path that they really need. Um, not coincidentally, Mahatma Gandhi was a big fan of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and uh, incorporate that into his spirituality. So it's a two-way street.